My name is Shadrach Mutavi. I'm working for GIZ, uh, for German Development Corporation, GIZ, Food Security and Road Resilience Program in the agriculture cluster in Kenya. I'm working as a policy advisor. Our topic is going to be what are typical land making processes and how do they work? I will begin by telling you the topics that we are going to cover. First, we are going to find out or define what is a policy. Then we are going to see what, fact, what factors trigger, trigger a policy process. Then we are going to see some key steps about policy making process. From there, we shall see why do we invest in policies. Then I'll give you some case example of Kenya. And I begin by telling you the definition or discussing with you the definition of a policy. A policy is a deliberate statement of intent to achieve a certain goal. Usually, policies are meant up of statements that guide also governments on how they will allocate resources and also the sectors through which they will allocate resources. Government uses policies, probably, to identify certain key issues on which to tackle. Let's say like, for example, employment creation, food security, land use matters. So that is what a policy is. Some examples of policies could be like the sessional papers, national policies, and probably uh, government acts or some statements uh, from the higher government as uh, executive orders. That is what policy is. What are some of the key factors that make a policy processes or policy processes begin? One, there could be decisions made at the high level, like decisions made at the national level. For example, in Kenya, we have the big four. The big four have been given by His Excellency, the President here in Kenya, and they, we are making policies so that we align ourselves to them. The big four here in Kenya, they are 100% food security, manufacturing, housing, and universal health care. Policy processes could also begin if stakeholders within a certain sector experience some problems. They could bring this into the foreground and therefore policy processes could begin. Policy process can also begin because of change in the external environment. Maybe government commitments into international, regional, even bilateral commitments can make the government make policies so that it confines with them. Policy processes can also begin if there is new scientific and validated information that has come into the knowledge of the government. This could lead into the beginning of a policy process. Then now we go further to now what are the key steps in making policy processes. The first one is the policy review. That is the issues. There has to be the issues as we have mentioned before. There are the issues, that's usually the first one. You understand, you see that they are good and they are worth making a policy. Then the next step is analysis of those issues, which is now what we call the policy context, analysis of the issues in terms of policy context. You do some modeling, you, did, you do look at them in details, whether they are actually good enough to make a policy. From there then, you get a team which makes, puts all those issues into a policy draft. This policy draft is the first step in making a policy whereby all the issues are put together. After this, they are subjected to stakeholder processes. Here they are discussed and stakeholders give their, stakeholders give their inputs. After this step, then the highest uh, institution in that particular ministry, if it is the Minister of Agriculture, it could be the cabinet secretary and the principal secretary, then it is presented to them for them to own it. After they own it and find they find it is okay, then 
uh, they presented to the, to the cabinet. In this, uh, cabinet memos are prepared and it is given to the cabinet for approval. Once the cabinet approves it, now it can take two steps depending on what kind of a policy it is. If it is a policy that can be implemented within the existing frameworks, then it is they prepare what we call an ordinary session of paper, which is taken straight to parliament for discussion, and then it is enacted. If it is a policy that may require new legal frameworks to be created, then now you begin preparing a bill, a bill for discussion in parliament. After this bill is prepared, the ministry through which that act, uh, through which that policy has come, presents it to parliament for discussion. This bill in the parliament is discussed and it discussed three times, debated three times in three sessions. If it is passed, then within 14 days, it is enacted into a law. And then it proceeds for implementation through preparing of regulations and guidelines. Further to what we have just learned about the policy processes, I want to make a further distinction about the policies that generate just an ordinary paper or common ordinary paper to parliament. These are those policies that can be implemented within the existing government frameworks or within the existing even uh, actual allocation of resources. Then the policies that go to make bills, these are those policies that will need new legal frameworks. They may even need the creation of new institutions. Those are the policies for which now we create bills or the relevant ministry will create a bill for discussion into parliament. After it is discussed in parliament and is enacted, then there will be need for preparation of new regulations and guidelines of how that bill or act will be implemented. Now, we want to discuss briefly, why do we need to keep reviewing policies? There is policies could even have omitted some things in the process of being developed. Policies can actually have a very big omission in the process and therefore they need to be constantly reviewed. There, the society is also changing. The population is increasing. There is also the issue of the climate change that is also coming up. Because of this, you need to keep reviewing the policies once and again. Also, there is the issue of technology. Technology keeps changing, and therefore you have to make the policies so that they're in tandem with the current technologies. There could be even the society itself. The society could have different values. The society could also even dif have different tastes, and this may need to review the policies as well. If I can give an example here, example here in Nairobi, around Nairobi there used to be many coffee estates sometimes ago. Over time, these coffee estates have been subdivided into small pieces of land, and therefore it is, they are being built, people are building now estates. Probably that is a change which has taken place. That means the land use patterns around Nairobi now need review and to be checked. Now, the other question is, why do we invest so much in policies? As I may have said earlier, policy processes are expensive processes. But why do we take so much time to invest in them? The reason why we invest so much in policies is because a policy is like a fulcrum, the centerpiece. On the left-hand side is the government resources. On the right-hand side, are the citizens. And the lever of that fulcrum is the programs that are developed. The programs that are developed so that the government can invest through those programs to uplift the living standards of its citizens. The lever is held in the fulcrum by the scientific facts, by agreements, by political goodwill. 
So it is very, very important to develop policies so that we can have a coherent delivery of services by the government, development partners, to improve the living standards of the citizens. The process of developing the National Agricultural Soil Management Policy in Kenya was triggered by several factors. First, from reports of the Minister of Agriculture and other stakeholders, it was found out that there was continuous decre declining productivity from the soils. Farmers were, getting, were continuously getting less from the soils. Also, stakeholders expressed concern about not being coordinated. Also, there were issues of lack of a framework, of a policy and legal framework through which soil issues could be handled. So this triggered then the beginning of the process of soil management policy. Also at the same time, there were, there were other policies around which also the soil management policy needed to be aligned to. There was the issue of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. There was the issue of the National Agricultural Policy. There was the issue of the National Irrigation Policy. There was the issue of National Land Reclamation Policy as well. The process of the development of the National Agricultural Soil Management Policy started in 2001. When stakeholders came together to see what the issues were. And at that time, they expressed the need for a strategy to deal with issues of soil management. In 2006, then a draft paper on policy was put in place to address the issues of soil fertility. In 2014, a task force was put in place again also to have this draft paper also prepared in such a way that it includes the issues of the Constitution. In 2015, during the Global Soil Week, the then Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, Madam Cicely Kariuki, attended the Global Soil Week. And here she expressed the need for support for the development of the National Agricultural Soil Management Policy. The German Development Corporation at this time through GIZ, offered to support the process. And the process was started. The process, the first thing in the process was to develop the task force, which was interministerial, so that it could develop the, the initial document for, of the policy. So a technical document was developed. This document was subjected to some key stakeholders and more so, it was subjected to the counties who deliberated, the key county officials, the what we call the CECs, the county executive committee members of the thematic working group on policy and regulation. They discussed this document. After that, this document was presented to the leadership of the Ministry of Agriculture, who again also agreed with it. After that, the document then was put in three wide circulating dailies here in Kenya. That is the Nation newspaper and the Standard newspaper. After that, the document was then compiled again now, awaiting for the regional consultations. It is after the regional consultations that now the document will be returned again to the ministry for, for final touch-up so that it can be taken we can prepare a cabinet memo and it is taken to parliament, to cabinet. Once the cabinet looks at it uh, and approves it, then it will see if there are some institutional changes, then a bill will be developed. If there are no institutional requirements, it will become an ordinary paper, an ordinary session of paper, and it will be taken to parliament straight away. So that is so, how far, so far, the National Agricultural Soil Management Policy has gone. What role does the development partners play in policy making processes? Development partners play a very key role 
in policy making processes by providing the necessary inputs into the policy making processes. These inputs could be financial, they could also be technical. For example, here in Kenya, the German Development Corporation has been providing a lot of support for the development of not only the National Agricultural Soil Management Policy, but even for other policies like the National Irrigation Policy and Bill as well. Through the German Development Corporation also, we have been able to support the county governments in Western Kenya through specifically the Food Security and Road Resilience Program. We have supported the counties to build capacity so that they can make their own policies at the county level, so that they can also be able to domesticate the national policies and make their own county-based policies. These are very important in the counties because they are very important input into the county integrated development plans. Now we go to the lessons learned in the policy development processes. We have learned that in the policy making process, you have to consider all the stakeholders. The policy process and the policy belongs to the stakeholders. And therefore, it is very important to identify all of them so that they can participate in the whole process. We have also learned that data, scientific data or scientific information needs to be simplified into simple messages. This way, the stakeholders in the, and all the interested parties are able to contribute effectively into the policy making process. We have also learned that policy making process is a very expensive process. In fact, providing all the inputs, maybe for the stakeholder workshops or the consultancies, we have learned that those are expensive, though they need to be prudently used. We have also learned that every policy process has its own course. There are some that will take place faster, there are others which will take a longer period of time. And that is quite normal with a policy process, that's what we have found out. We have also found out that you need to have a model, something like a proposed, uh, and as what could be the possible outcome of the policy process. This will help very much in the whole policy process. Now I want to tell you what has been my contribution in the policy making processes here in Kenya. I was employed by German Development Corporation four years ago as a policy advisor. Within this period, I've participated in quite a number of policy processes, not only the National Agricultural Soil Management Policy, but also in the irrigation policy and other policies. I have been able at every time, every point, design what inputs are required for a particular policy process. Sometimes it could be consultancies. There we develop terms of reference for consultancies and we manage the consultancy process until we get the required output. We have also been able to support the county governments in policy making processes. We have done capacity building. We have developed um, curriculum for capacity building of counties so that the counties can be able to make their own policies and strategies. Because in Kenya, there is a devolution, there is a national government and the county government. We, through our support, we have supported the national government on in developing, in being, in developing a curriculum for supporting them to support the counties. We have developed a curriculum through which we have taken the national directors so that the national directors can support the counties in domestication of national policies. We have so far for the national irrigation policy supported it and right now it's in parliament for the third reading. I now want to thank you for participating in this massive open online course on land matters. Thank you very much and I welcome you to Kenya. Thank you.